Welcome back to AlgoJS. Today's question is leak code 547, number of provinces. So there are n cities. Some of them are connected, while some are not. If city A is connected directly with city B, and city B is connected directly with city C, then city A is connected indirectly with city C. A province is a group of directly or indirectly connected cities, and no other cities outside of the group. You're given an n by n matrix is connected, where is connected i j is equal to 1. If i city and j city are directly connected and is connected ij is equal to zero otherwise return the total number of provinces so the trick with this question is to work out how these values map to these nodes within the graph and how do we determine if they're connected and how are we going to build an adjacency list from this so here i've drawn out the indices right so within this is connected array of arrays we have index 0 1 2 these are mapped to the nodes Right, so 0 is mapped to 1, 1 is mapped to 2, 2 is mapped to 3. And within each of these indices, we have three values, right? 0, remember, is mapped to 1, 1 is mapped to 2, and 2 is mapped to 3. Now, how to determine whether they're connected? Well, if there's a 1, there is a connection. If there is a 0, there isn't a connection. So 1 is connected to itself, so the node is always connected to itself. 1 is also connected to... 2 because the index of 1 which is mapped to 2 contains a 1. The index of 2 which is equal to 3 has a 0 within it so 1 is not connected to 3 and so on and so forth. So then we can create an adjacency list from this. So our adjacency list will look something like this. So now we've built out the adjacency list we can follow a normal graph traversal in order to work out how many of these nodes are actually connected and in order to do that because it's a graph and it's not acyclic we're going to need a visited set to stop us from going over nodes we've already visited and we're also going to need a count, right? And this count is going to be the number of connections, which we can set at zero. So we need to loop through this adjacency list. We need to loop through the keys and carry out a normal graph traversal. So firstly, we check and set. So let's start at zero. We check and set if we have zero. We don't. So we add it to the visited set. We check zero's neighbors. So zero has zero. So we don't need to check that, right? Because it's already been visited. And one. So let's traverse to one. We don't have one within visited, so we add it into visited. We check if one has neighbors. Well, one has zero. If we go back to zero, it's already within visited, so we don't go there. One, well, we're seeing one at the minute, and one is already in visited. So now we need to determine what to return from this recursive call. Well, we're incrementing the count of connections, right? So we just need to return one from this call, and we can use that value to increment count. So we're looping through the keys, as we said earlier. We've reached one. We're going to carry out the recursive call on one. We check its neighbors, right? So we have zero and one. We check to see whether one is invisited. And because we've already checked the zeroth node, we have already populated visited with one. So we don't check this. This has already been carried out because it is connected to zero. Then we move to two. We check if two is invisited. It's not, so we add it into visited. Then we check two's neighbors. Well, two is a neighbor of itself. That is within visited, so we don't look any further. We return one which will increment, which will add on to count. Then once we finish this loop, we can just exit this and return our count. Time complexity for the solution is going to be O n squared. Because this is an n by n matrix, we are going to be traversing through the entirety of it in space. Well, we have a visited array that we're going to be populating throughout this. So it's going to be O of n, where n is the value stored within the visited set. So let's start by creating our adjacency list. We're going to have to loop through the rows and columns. So it is connected dot length i plus plus. Now within here, let's extract out the value that we're currently on. So it is connected ij. This will make it easier to read. And if the value we're on is equal to one, we have a connection. So here we can build our adjacency list. So if we don't have an adjacency list at i, we just create it, right? So the adjacency list at i is going to be equal to an array containing j. So we make that connection. Otherwise, if there is already an adjacency list, we just grab adjacency list at i and push in the value of j. And this will build out our adjacency list. Then for the next part, we'll carry out the graph traversal. 
So let's create a visited set. Let's initialize our count to zero. Now we need to loop through the keys of the adjacency list. Remember, the adjacency list is an object. So if we loop through the key in adjacency list. So as I said, the key within any object is always going to be a string. So we need to first convert that to an integer. Then we carry out the DFS function, passing in the num, and we can increment count with the value returned from this DFS function. So function DFS will pass in the current node, which is going to be the number of the key. We check if visited has current node. If it does, we can return zero. We don't want to increment the count because this isn't a new connection. Otherwise, we add it to the visited set. Let's look at the neighbors, which is going to be the adjacency list at the index of current node. Then we need to loop through those and recurse into each one of those neighbors. And then finally, once this recursive call is complete, we need to return a connection, right? So we need to return one. Then this one will be appended to count and we can update the amount of connections. Then finally, we can return count. Let's give this a run. And there you go.